Okay, let's do this algebra review. So the first question is find the domain of the following rational functions. So because x appears in the denominator, so they are called the rational functions, where x is a variable. So when x appears in the denominator, the function is called a rational function. And then we want to consider what kind of values work for x. That's called the domain of the function. So what do we do? In mathematics, we don't do something, just anything, any number, any expression divided by zero. So this does not exist in mathematics. So that is to say this denominator cannot be zero. If it's a zero, it just does not exist in mathematics. So we take the denominator, we say, okay, that cannot be zero, which in this case means x cannot be four. If x is four, four minus four, that causes zero in the denominator. So that's the domain x not in four, x is not equal to four. And sometimes we want to represent the domain in interval notation. So that means it can be any small number from negative infinity up to four, but not including four, we use close parentheses, union starting from four up to positive infinity. So this, Notation means x can be any real number, just not four. For b, we do the same thing. We say the denominator, we take the denominator, we say the denominator cannot be zero. And this one we see can be factored. We factor as x plus two times x plus four. This value is so small. Can I make it bigger? I cannot make this letters bigger. Maybe I change my color to be red. Yeah, red is more obvious. So I factor the denominator as this, as two binomials. So I see, okay, this cannot be zero. Then I use the zero property that is say x cannot be or x not equal to negative two and negative four. Right. X can be any numbers that not negative four, not negative two. So I use the interval notation to represent this going from negative infinity up to negative four. So this is one interval in union the interval from negative four up to negative two. This is super difficult for me to use my fingers to write on this uh, writing pad. Then union from negative two up to past infinity. Right. So similarly for C, right? We want to factor the denominator when we it cannot be zero. So we factor as x minus two squared. So this is a perfect squared form, which means x minus two times x minus two. It cannot be zero, and not equal to zero. So which means x not equal to two. We use the interval notation again, we say, okay, it can be from negative infinity up to two, union from two up to past infinity. For D, just X cannot be zero, that's it, right? X cannot be zero. And then we represent it as negative infinity interval notation up to zero, union zero up to past infinity. So that's where we find the domain of rational functions. So we see each case is different. It depends on the denominator of the rational function. 
So second type of question, we want to simplify rational expressions. So the numerator, we can factor as difference of two squared can be factored as x minus four times x plus four. And denominator can be factored as x minus four, x minus four, x plus three. Right? So the, the numerator is a difference of two squares. Right? 16 is a four square. The denominator can be factored as a negative four and three. Negative four times three is negative 12. Negative four plus three is negative one x. Then we see these two simplified to be one. So we're left with x plus four divided by x plus three. This one, the numerator, we want to factor out two. When we factor out two, maybe we'll factor out negative two. We factor out negative two. Then we have x minus seven, right? You see negative two times x, we still have negative two x, negative two times negative seven, we still have positive 14. Then the denominator, we want to factor out x. Then we have x minus seven. So then we see x minus seven divided by x minus seven, that becomes one. So we get a negative two over x. Right? Negative in the numerator or in the denominator, usually read up front. This one we want to factor again. We want to think about the two factors of negative 34 adds up to be negative 15. So 34 is two times 17. So we want to factor as x minus 17 times x plus two, right? Because negative 17 times two, that's negative 34. Negative 17 plus two, that's negative 15. Give us the middle term. Then the denominator, first we want to factor out three. Once we factor out three, we have x squared minus four. That's difference of two squares can be factored as x plus two times x minus two. Then we see x plus two divided by x plus two becomes one. So this is simplified to be x minus seven, x minus seven in the numerator, three times x minus two in the denominator. Okay, allow me not to write it. It's too difficult for me, finger it. It's too hurtful for my fingers. So this one, let's, so now we have, let's factor our negative sign. Once we factor our negative sign, let me put it over here first. If I factor our negative sign, this becomes a minus, right? Minus 20x, and this also becomes a minus. Then I see I can factor as x, 3x, I want three times seven, because three times seven gives me 21. 21 minus one, that's 20. So I want to do three plus one, three x plus one, x minus seven. In this case, when we multiply three x with a negative seven, I get negative 21 x. And then one times x, I get a positive one x. Add together, I get negative 20 x. I get the middle term. And the denominator, similarly, I factor the denominator. Yeah, I'm thinking about 2x. Two, so I want to play 2 with the factors of negative 21 to come up with negative 11. So 21, I can do 3 and 7. Right? 2 times 7 is 14. 14 minus 3, that's 11. Bingo. So I want 2x times 7. So I better put 3 in this with this with 2x. Otherwise, x minus 7. This, you see, 3 times negative 7, negative 21. 2x times negative 7, that's negative 14. Plus 3x, that's negative 11x. 
So factor this way, now those canceled. So I'm left with a negative parenthesis, 3x plus 1, close parenthesis, divided by 2x plus 3. Question 3. Perform the indicated operation and simplify. The first one is multiplication. We do the same thing. We factor them, we put them in a factored form. Then we cancel the same factors in the numerator and in the denominator. So let's factor out the numerators. x squared minus ax plus 12. We want to do x minus 2, x minus 6. Then times 4x plus 16, I can factor out 4. Factor out 4, I have x plus 4. So that's in my numerator. In my denominator, I have difference of two squares. x squared minus 16 is x plus 4 times x minus 4. Then x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's x minus 2 squared. Well, that's write x minus 2 times x minus 2. Now I'm looking for common factors in the numerator and in the denominator. I see x minus 2, x minus 2. I see x plus 4, x plus 4. So I'm left with x minus 6 times 4, or 4 times x minus 6 in the numerator and x minus 4 times x minus 2 in the denominator. This one, you know, similar way. Let's put them in a factored form. 9 minus x squared, difference of two squares, 3 plus x times 3 minus x. 3x three plus 9, let's factor out 3. Then we have x plus 3. Denominator. The first one is perfect squared, it's x, oops, x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? x squared plus 6, x plus 9, that's x plus 3 squared. Then factor out 3 from 3x three minus 9, I have x minus 3. Now I look for common factors. I have 3 plus x, same as x plus 3, cancelled. I have x plus 3, x plus 3, cancelled. I have 3, 3, cancelled. Then I have 3 minus x, and then x minus 3. So 3 minus x is a negative x minus 3. Then these two also cancelled. So I'm left with negative 1. So this simplified to be negative 1. This one, division, we want to change to be multiplication. Then we flip the numerator and the denominator. Right. Then what do we get? We get numerator, we get, oops. We get an x squared. times x squared minus 1, which is x x plus 1 times x minus 1. Numerator. Denominator, we have 1 plus x, which is the same as x plus 1, times x. So we turn the division into multiplication. We flip the numerator and denominator. So now I look for common factors. And then x and this cancels with x squared. That was left. Left with x times x minus 1. D, similar. We're going to change this multiplication into division that flips the numerator and denominator. The, num the numerator will factor as, you know, 1 times anything does anything. The x squared plus x minus 6 is in the numerator now. That can be factored as 
x minus 2 times x plus 3. And denominator, we have difference of two squares, x squared minus 4, that's x minus 2 times x plus 2. x squared plus 6x plus 9, is x plus 3 squared. x plus 3, x plus 3. Now we look for common factors to simplify. Those two simplify. X plus three, X plus three simplified. We have one left in the numerator. The denominator will have X plus two times X plus three. Okay, similarly, oh, this is a plus. Plus, we need the common denominators. So this term, we want to factor as 2x, 2 times x minus 2. Let's write down the factors first. Let's write them in the factor the form first. So we still have 5x minus 1 in the numerator. Then the denominator, we want to put in a factor form, which is x minus 2 times x minus 1. Okay. The second one, so we add the second fraction. The numerator is 3. The denominator is, we factor out 2, we have x minus 2. So the common denominator is 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. So we need to multiply by 1s. So we want to multiply by 2 over 2 for the first, first one. For the second one, we want to multiply x minus 1 over itself. x minus 1 times x minus 1. Now we have common denominator, right? The two denominators are the same. We just combine the numerators. The denominator is the same. I'm not going to write it. The numerators we have 2 times 5x, 10x, minus 1 times 2, which is 2. Then plus 3 times x, 3x, 3 times negative 1, that's negative 3. So we we'll combine. Like terms, the numerator becomes 13x minus 5. Then divided by our common denominators. So this is our common denominator. We write below here. That's the answer. So this is subtraction. We need to do the same. I'm going to put them in a factored form. The numerator is still x plus 3. The denominator, the first denominator can be factored as x minus 2 times x plus 1. And the second one, so this is the minus, minus the second rational expression. We still have 2x minus 1 in the numerator. And the denominator, we have difference of two squares. We have x minus 2 times x plus 2. Now, we need to form our common denominator. x minus 2, x minus 2 is common factor. And this one has x plus 1. This one has x plus 2. So we need to multiply the first one with x plus 2. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. And the second one, we're missing in the denominator, we're missing x minus x plus 1. So we need to multiply x plus 1 in the numerator and in the denom denominator. Oh, my fingers are so tired. Okay. Now, 
So the denominator, now we have common denominator, x minus two times x plus one times x plus two. We need to simplify the numerators. The numerator, numerators are subtraction, right? There's a subtraction. So the first one, I have x plus three times x plus two, that's x squared, x squared plus five x, because three plus two is five, then three times two, that's a six. The minus, minus two x minus one times x plus one. That's two x squared. Two x times one, that's two x. Negative one times x, negative one x, that's plus x. Then minus one times plus one, that's minus one. Right, so this is numerated all lower the common denominator. So this is three factors is our common denominator. Then we simplify the numerators. Simplify x squared minus two x squared is a negative x squared. Five x minus x is four x. Six minus negative one becomes six plus one, that's plus seven. So this over our den common denominators. Right. And this one, this numerator cannot be simplified anymore. So we leave it like that. So answer is negative x squared plus four x plus seven over the common denominator of x minus two times x plus two times x plus one. Okay, that's for F. So I needed to clear this. So I can write on for G. G, same thing, right? But we have three terms. Oh, X plus three, X plus three, X plus three. X plus three. Common denominators are ready. So we just do this like this, minus this numerator plus this numerator. X squared, right, just by itself. So we have X squared. We have 5X minus 4X, that's just X plus 7X, that becomes 8X. So the numerator we have X squared plus 8X. For the numbers, we have 1. The minus negative five becomes one plus five, which is six plus nine, 15. Plus 15. Then the denominator, we have x plus three. Then we look at the numerator. The numerator can be simplified. The numerator can be simplified as can be factored as x plus three times x plus five. And the denominator is still x plus three. Now we still have a common factor. Treating x plus three as a factor. x plus three divided by x plus three, it becomes one. So the answer for g is just x plus five. H, we need the common denominators. So this one, let's just factor underneath. Difference of two squares, x plus two times x minus two. Then this one is x minus one times x minus two. And we need this one there. And this one is x plus two times x minus one. Let's see what's our common denominator. x plus two, x minus two. x minus one, x minus two. So this one is missing x minus one. So we need to multiply x minus one in the numerator and in the denominator.
and this x minus one, x minus two, missing x plus two. So we multiply x plus two in the numerator and in the denominator. Because we multiply by one, right? This two, this one missing x minus two. So we multiply x minus two in the numerator and in the denominator. The rest is just simplify. Let's simplify. Simplify means to simplify the numerator. The denominator we want to keep in the factored form. Okay. We like it to be factored form. So the first one, we have two x times x, that's two x squared. Minus one times two x, that's two x. Then minus one times x plus two, this is x plus two. Then plus x plus one times x minus two, that's x squared. Then one x minus two x is negative x, then minus two. So that's our numerator. Our denominator, just the common denominators. Our denominator is just this, three factors. Then we simplify the numerator. You 2x squared plus x squared is 3x squared. Negative 2x minus x, negative 3x, minus another x is minus 4x. For the numbers, we have a minus 2, that's a negative 2, negative 2, that's negative 4. Then our denominator is still the common denominator, is still this guy underneath. And the numerator we, we observe can be factored, right? Because if we, if we do factors of negative four to be two times negative two, so let's factor the numerator. The numerator can be factored as three x plus two, times x minus two. You see, three x times two is three x times negative two, that's negative six x. Two times x, positive two x. You know, add together, that's negative four x. So divided by our common denominator. Divided by our common denominator, we have three factors. We have x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. We have common factors again. We have we see x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. That just becomes 1. So the answer is this. 3x plus 2 in the numerator, x plus 2 times x minus 1 in the denominator. Let's see, four. we have four layers of rational expressions. Okay, let's figure out the common denominator. If it's too much trouble, you think, okay, do separately, do the numerator and the denominator separately. The numerator, we see this one, we need to multiply by 64 over 64. Right. And the second one, we need to multiply x squared over x squared. Then we see 64 times x squared is a common denominator. So the, new, so the numerator becomes 64 minus x squared divided by 64x squared. So we combined the numerators into like this. The denominator, let me change my color to be red. The, in the denominator, we see the common denominator of those two terms is the ax. So we want to multiply x over x for the first one. We want to multiply a over a for the second one. So ax is a common denominator. Mm -hmm. 
Then for this fraction, the numerator is just x plus eight. Two layers of division, we can change to be division, we can change it to be multiplication. Then uh, take the inverse of the second term, right? So we write it as a 64 minus x squared divided by 64x squared. That's our numerator. Then this, this long bar is a division sign, right? Division sign, we can change to be multiplication. Then we flip the numerator, we flip the numerator and denominator. So the ax becomes a numerator and the x plus eight is in the denominator. We observe, we see 64 minus x squared can be factored, right? That's 64 is a squared. That's a plus x times eight minus x. Then let me change my color. So this eight can simplify this 64. So that becomes eight, right? This eight becomes one. And this x can simplify this x squared. So we have a x left here. As 64 minus x squared is a plus x times a minus x. So we still have denominator, we have a x times x plus eight. Right. Ax comes from this denominator, x plus eight from this denominator. A numerator will have one times six, 64 minus x squared, which is a plus x times a minus x. Now we see those two factors are canceled. So the answer is a minus x divided by ax. And these two cannot be simplified anymore. If you truly want to simplify more, you do a divided by ax, you get a one over x. Then x minus x divided by ax, that's one over eight. You can write the answer in this one, or as one fraction as a minus x divided by ax, either one is fine. Let's see B. B, we see that maybe we do separately, the numerator and the denominator, we're dealing with separately. We do the, then we do the same thing as A. We see X minus one, X plus two. So we want to multiply X plus two over itself for the first one. x minus one times x plus two, right? And for the second one, well, it's addition, right? Addition, we want to add those two fractions. And for the second one, we want to multiply x minus one divided by x minus one. So what do we get? I'm going to write on this side. So the numerator, we have 3 times x plus 2 plus, because the operation is plus, 6 times x minus 1. That's in the numerator. And denominator, we have a common denominator now, just x minus 1 times x plus two. Okay. That's our numerator. Then our denominator, this part. We see the first one, we need to multiply by three minus x. 
divided by three minus x. The second one, we want to multiply by x plus two divided by x plus two. So what do we have? We have a six times three minus x minus, because operation is minus, minus a three times x plus two. Then divided by the common denominator, which is x plus two times three minus x. Then we simplify it. We simplify. We simplify the numerator. So we have three x plus six plus 6x minus 6. We don't, want to, we don't want to simplify the denominators, okay? We keep the denominators as they are. We want to keep this one. We don't want to multiply this. We want to keep this one. We want to keep this one because they are in a factored form. It's beautiful. But those two are not. These two, you see, we have this plus. We have this minus. So we need to combine those two. So then the denominator is x minus one times x plus two, right? Then this long bar division, we're going to write as multiplication. We're going to multiply. Multiply the denominator inverse. So now x plus two times three minus x becomes in the numerator place. And uh, 6x, 6x, no, 18, because 3 times 6, 18, minus 6x, minus 3x, minus 6. In the numerator now. Well, multiplication, which is a multiply cross. You simplify this term. We need to simplify this term as a factor. So let's simplify. 3x plus 6x, that's 9x. Positive 6 minus 6, I'm here. Positive 6 minus 6, that's 0. Then the second term, I have x. Oh, now it's beautiful. I don't have to simplify that. I have Hold on a second. Right, because it's a multiplication. Let's just do multi x plus two, three minus x. Is that as, fact as factors? So that's my new numerator, right? I have three x plus nine, six x, I got nine x. Then positive six minus six becomes zero. So nine x is a factor in the numerator. Then I have those two factors, x plus two, three minus x. Let's see the denominator. Denominator, I have two factors already. I have x minus one, I have x plus two. Then let's see what simplifies this, the other one. So I have 18 minus six, which is a 12. So 12, the minus six x minus three x, that's a minus nine x. And this one, I have 12 minus 9x. I see I can factor out 3. So I factor out 3. Then 12 divided by 3, that's 4. 9 divided by 3, that's 3. Right, I don't really have to do that because nothing can be simplified. Oh, yes. It can be simplified because I have 9. You see, I have 9 divided by 3. 3, of course, becomes 1. 9 becomes 3. I have x plus 2 here, I have x plus 2 here, that becomes 1. I have 3 minus x, but I don't have 3 minus x, right? So what's our answer? Our answer is, in the numerator, I have 3 times 3 minus x. In the denominator, I have x, x minus 1 times four minus three x, four minus three x. That's our answer. 
nothing can be simplified anymore. Let's see C. C, the easiest way is we want to multiply by one. This one is x minus four divides itself. Basically, we want to multiply the numerator with x minus four, the denominator with x minus four. When we do that, we multiply three with x minus four. So the numerator we get three times x minus four minus operation is minus minus two. That's our new numerator. Our denominator we have five times x minus four, then plus four. Let's see if this makes sense to us. I multiply x minus four with three, right? Because I have four terms. I have two terms in the numerator, two terms in the denominator. So every one has to be multiplied by x minus four. So three times x minus four, I have here. But when x minus four times this term, x minus four cancel with x minus four, only two left, minus two, minus two left. Similarly, when I multiply x minus four with those two, that's a five times x minus four. Then when x minus four times with this one, these two canceled, so only plus four. So now I'll simplify it. Numerator, I have three x minus 12 minus two, or well, minus 12 minus two which is minus 15. And so our numerator, or well, let's say denominator. Denominator will have 5x minus 20 plus 4, right? 5 times x, 5x, 5 times negative 4, negative 20, then plus 4. Well, what's negative 20 plus 4? Negative 16. And nothing can be simplified. We leave like this. Let's see D. D, we want to do something similar to C. We see x squared y, denominator x y squared in the denominator x squared y squared, then x y. Okay, we want to multiply. So the common denominator for the numerator and for the denominator is just x squared y squared. So we want to multiply the numerator with x squared y squared. The denominator with x squared, y squared also. In this way, we see a lot of things get canceled. When I multiply x squared, y squared with this one, we see x squared canceled, y canceled with y to the first power, then the numerator only left with 5y. 5y. The minus 2x. Because when I simplify those two terms, when I multiply this one with this one, y squared canceled, and x canceled with x raised by first power. So that just becomes 2x. Similarly, for the denominator, denominator I have 3 because x squared y squared cancels the denominator of 3 over x squared y squared. Then plus 4 times xy because I need, because x squared divided by x, that's x, y squared divided by y, that's y. And this one cannot be simplified. That's the answer. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this one. I'm gonna make another video for this one.